I want to go ahead and I want to get to the first part of my stream. And uh, that is, of course, my review for Avatar 2 Blue on Blue, Chad. Or as I like to call it, or as other people call it. Actually, I know I like to call it Avatar 2 Blue on Blue. Other people in some circles like to call it Avatar the Way of Water. I'm sure that's what James Cameron would prefer, Chad. But I'm not here to lick James Cameron's boots. I ain't no goddamn bootlicker, Chad. I can come up with my own, you know, my own thoughts on a film. Don't need James Cameron to tell me how to feel and think and have other people tell me how to feel and think. I don't mind listening to other people's opinions. I, I'm always interested to hear, you know, someone different from me. I think that's cool. It inspires a lot of great conversations, Chad. A lot of great discussions. A lot of great discussions. But, um, but yeah, Avatar uh, 2 is the, I guess, long-awaited sequel to the original Avatar, which came out in 2009. You know, I'll give you kind of a, a very brief uh, premise of the film, chat. It uh, focuses on Jake Sully, or Sully now. They now just call him Jake Sully, chat. They dropped the Sully. He's now just Jake Sully. And it takes place, I guess, a decade and a half after the events of the first film. Focuses on him. And Jake Sully's family with Nick Knack. And him and Nick Knack, they got busy, Chad. They've been breeding. They've been breeding. They popped, she popped out a lot of kids. I don't know, four or five of them or something. I lost track, honestly. Uh, but yeah, focuses on them and explores the oceans uh, of Pandora. And where uh, Jake Sully and his uh, kitty cat family meet a, another tribe of Navi who are kind of um, uh, sea dwellers, Chad. Uh, or they live uh, near the sea, and they have like you know they have big old fish fins and shit and fish tails, and so they're like, oh, you're slightly different, you're a slightly different color. Oh, I'm sure that won't cause any problems. And also, Chad also focuses on the battle of the humans once again, who want to exploit Pandora for its resources, Chad. But oh, is it for unobtainium or something new? Well, I'll let you know in just a bit. But kind of give you a brief background on my own history and my own opinions on the um. On, on the first Avatar film, which I have to review someday. I got to do a scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown. Um, but listen, I I think the first movie is fine. I think it's visually very pretty. I think it has a number of really cool action sequences in it. But my issue with that movie is the story is so incredibly generic. It borrows from numerous films in the past, but numerous better movies, you know. Uh, and it just has really unremarkable characters and also just really bad dialogue. And I feel like the movie skirts by because of its effects and its CGI and its mocap, which should be praised and should be celebrated, of course, and, and looked at and used in other films and other, uh, you know, uh, projects and throughout, you know, media chat. Not just movies, but television, video games, of course. But, you know, it's just one of those movies where I'm just like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's seen the theater. It's like, oh, this is, this is thrilling, but... When you watch it again, it's like, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's, it's, it's entertaining enough. Um, and that's why I've just kind of, it's, it's very surprising to me that this, well, the original Avatar, well, you know what? It's not surprising. I think initially it, it, it was surprising that, that that then became like the biggest film of all time, at least, you know, in terms of money. It's the most commercially successful movie of all time, making, what, nearly $3 billion? $2.9 billion. But in, thinking about in hindsight, uh, the reason why it was successful is because it is so, so incredibly just not controversial. It is, uh, because of how generic it is, it doesn't upset anyone. It doesn't make any bold choices that would engender, um, you know, ill will towards it. It's just, it's fine. It's not there to upset anybody. It's not there to make any, other than make an environmental message. You know, it's not there to upset anyone politically or religiously or anything like that. Just kind of says, yep, this is our story. going to tell a story you've seen, you know, time and time again. I think because of that, because it's not controversial, because it doesn't take any risks in any capacity, uh, is probably why it managed to make so much money, Chad. You know, if, I mean, if the movie was controversial, it took a certain political stance, it wouldn't be released in China, now would it? And so I feel like that's one of the big reasons why that movie, the, why that film has been so successful. You know, entertaining enough, but for, for myself, it's, it's fine. It's okay. Uh, and that's what brings us to Avatar uh, The Way of Water, Avatar 2 Blue and Blue, which is a film that I just haven't really been all that excited. I'm curious about, but not excited. Just like, okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do differently? That's my thing. I was, I was, I was, the thing that did excite me was like, okay, we well, got all the generic trope stuff out of the way. 
What are you going to do now? How are you going to explore this world? How are you going to develop these characters? And after watching it, Chad, after the three-plus-hour viewing of Avatar, I realized something. And just thinking about it, like I've only seen it hours ago. But I realized that this movie is the exact same film as the last one. <laughs> Except it's longer, much longer, unnecessarily a longer chat. Has more blue kitty cat people whose names you will not remember in the film. And it has even more generic storytelling tropes. Yes, chat. It's very pretty. It's there's no doubt you see out there. It, it, the, the, you have some underwater sequences that certainly look gorgeous, chat. There's no doubt you got you got the you know the forest and things and to see how the environment works with each other. It's like sure, it's all very pretty, all very gorgeous looking, and it has a handful, at least to me, of of kind of mildly interesting action sequences. There's really only one like really big action sequence in the last third of the movie. Um, but the problem is, I think at the end of the day, at least for myself, uh, actually no, not for myself. I think it's just it's just it's very obvious. This movie contains even more problems than the first one, uh, and it doesn't. You know, it it, it makes uh, some bad first steps because the movie starts out with numerous retcons to the original movie and features just many sequences with annoying children. Now, listen, I'm not against retcons. You know, uh, like in general, it's like, okay, if you're going to retcon something, you need to do something incredibly special with that retcon. You need to make that retcon impressive. And it adds to the story and it adds to the characters. Case in point, look at Stranger Things Season 4. Like, the creators of Stranger Things admitted, we had no idea uh, that Vecna was going to be featured you know, later on the series. They, they came up with that much later on. And they retconned things later on with, with Vecna, where Vecna was responsible for everything. Okay? And the thing is, I wasn't bothered by it. They admit it. They admit it's like, yes, we retconned this. This wasn't the original plan. But the, pro, the, the thing is, the thing that, the, the, that was so good about that is that, that Vecna was such a compelling villain and a great way to re reinvigorate interest in the series. And you do, do more stuff with Eleven and with the other kids and Max. And it, like, it, adds to the, it adds to the story itself. And I was like, that was great. I was like, that's a great, that is a great example of a retcon that works. They have just weird retcons in this that come out of fucking nowhere. I was like, what are you, what are you even talking about? All I'll say is there is a, there is a human character in this film who uh, you're introduced to him initially as a toddler. He's the guy who, he's the cultural appropriating kid. He has the he has these the he's the blonde haired kid with the with the dreadlocks who fancies himself a Navi and is the adopted child of of Jake Sully and Nick Knack, uh Zoe Zaldana's character. Uh what's, what's his name? Natiri, who she does not fucking like him. <laughs> um they say they say very I, I did appreciate this that they did not like like oh shit and like drag it across the for the, the entire movie like oh, who's the son of this kid who's the who's the father of this of this kid when they say who it is I'm like what the fuck are you talking about it comes out of nowhere nowhere and initially I was like wait what I was just confused I was just really really confused by that scene uh, and they proceed to not know what to really do with that character. <laughs> Throughout the rest of the movie. Um, and then you, the most of the film, it's, like, it's not really about Jake Sully and Nick Knack this time, uh, Natiri. It's really about their children. And I have to tell you, uh, I do not like these kids at all. I found them uh, at, at times, like there's one particular character played by Sigourney Weaver who. Oh God! Well, I want to get into the specific specificities with, with with the individual character, especially with her, because she's she's everything with that character is very weird to me. Um, however, she was the most tolerable, and she probably she has some interesting things going on. They just don't execute them all that well, or they're saving it for sequels. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. But for the, every every other scene in this movie is Jake Sully and the Teary's kids getting in trouble or getting captured. There's at least three or four or five scenes of them getting captured by the Humies or something else. And it's like, God damn, even one of the characters says, I'm captured again. It's like, yeah, like they try to make a, ah, we're, we're pointed out, we're making a joke of it. So therefore we can get away with it. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like, no. And like, 
they have like such young kids going on these adventures. Like, why are you dragging this kid along? They're gonna be a fucking albatross in your neck. You know that they're just gonna end up getting captured and have they have no have no uh, function and actually helping during this mission or or adventure. And then inevitably they get captured and they have to save them. It's like it's like I'm fucking. I'm, I, I, they happen throughout the entire movie. And the thing is. Like we've gotten to a point now, we can have like really competent kids in films where they don't always need to be saved. They can do the saving. They can save the adults. You know, they can be proactive. And I feel like so many of these kids were just not. They were just there to be captured into wine and fucking bitch and moan. And 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 then that leads to the next thing, chat. You and I, I'm like, why are you? doing this why we're on a whole new alien world of different cultures but we have stephen king bullies in between stuff in between scenes of of water stuff in marine life chat when we go to this whole new village because oh well you know these new blue blue kitty cat people they they're a different color slightly different color slightly different shade of blue and uh they got like big forearms they got and they got fins they got like a fin on their tail and they're liter and they're just constantly picking on, as they say, you know, for the the forest Navi, forest boy and forest girl. Although you know, uh, Jake Sully's kids and Knickknacks kids, they got some insults from too, calling them fish lips and fishtail. And I'm just like, why, <laughs> why are we doing this? And so you have scenes where they're bullying each other, and it goes back and forth, and they're just they're just doing it's. And the thing is. In ordinarily, and this this is a big this is a big problem I, I have. I think overall the just how this movie's being reviewed, scenes like this would be fucking heavily criticized in any other movie. But for whatever reason, I'm noticing no one's bringing up this these scenes here with these big bully kids, with these kids just like oh you look different, so I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. I'm just like oh, this is what we're doing, okay, all right. Um, and the other thing about this movie, so much of this film is just a slice of life movie that is occasionally interrupted by evil human shenanigans or blue kitty cat bullies. Um, and that's the, I think that's the biggest problem. Because, and that's why it feels like the original film again. Because in the original movie, Jake Sully, he's getting used to his avatar body. He is integrating with the, the, the Navi forest culture and everything. And now we're just seeing it again, except now... Jake Sully and his family are trying to integrate with the water Navi. I'm just like, this is the same shit. It's like, yes, it's a different environment. There's no doubt about that. And there's some, it's like, oh, it's beautiful. But I'm like, I'm seeing the same shit with characters who have less depth than even those original ones did and who are annoying. They're getting themselves captures. Like, what are you doing? Why is this happening? It's unnecessary. And then, it, 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 and then I'm sorry, but it, 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 this movie repeats the same thing that the original one does. It has terrible dialogue. I just mentioned the fish lips and forest boy. They have Stephen Lane. He's back chat. And they, they just, man, let's talk about retcons with him. Um, this, this isn't, this is not a spoiler. I'm sorry. They, they address this in the first five minutes of the film. Why Stephen Lang is back. Uh, and you know, he, as you see in the trailers, he's a blue kitty cat person. And they're like, yeah, you know, we just took your DNA. We mixed it with a blue kitty cat. And now you're this. And also, you're mem thankfully, and they do more retconning. Thankfully, before you went on that mission, remember that last mission, the last movie? Oh, yeah, we just we just made a copy of all your memories and in your brain. And so, just uploading that in the body. And now you're good. So, you know, he's experienced everything up until the point where, you know, the original Avatar. That's it. And it's all in the first five minutes of the film. It's like... Okay, <laughs> all right, and, and and the thing is, it's so weird to me. It's like, why are you bringing back the Stephen Lane Cordage Cordage care? He's he's a he's a cat clone. He's a kitty cat clone. Exactly, that's all he is. And the thing is, it's like he's not really all that interesting or compelling as a villain. The first Avatar, and now to hear that they're literally just he's going to be the villain in, in the main villain in the other sequels. I'm like, why? There's nothing standing out about him at all. And, like, the lengths at which they brought him back, like, the loopholes and the retcons, it's like, you could have just created a whole new character. They introduce a lot of new characters in this movie who you forget about. You're like, oh, yeah, I forgot you're in this film. It's like, why him? I, I don't get it. Like, you know, I get it's because he wants revenge on Jake Sully and um, Nick Knack and stuff. And so that's the, the, the it's personal now, I guess, you know, I thought it was pretty personal to begin with. And so it's like, yeah, so you, you got that kind of manufactured, uh, conflict right there. And then, yeah, well, I don't even want to say what the other thing is, Chad, because it, even though it's literally mentioned the first five minutes of the movie or 10 minutes of the movie, 
it just it just kind of comes out of nowhere. I'm you're just kind of baffled at first. Like, wait, that's who that is? Really? That's who that person's really? Okay, if you say so. Um, it's just it's just very weird. Very, very weird. Um, and they also they have subplots. They introduce new new subplots with new characters and they go absolutely nowhere. They go on for so long that I think they eventually forgot about them, or they go and focus on some other thing. Like the character that Sigourney Weaver plays, which, oh my god. I'll tell you what. Like her her performance is interesting because sometimes she'll sound fine, but other times I realize, oh, you're a seventy five year old woman pretending to be a fourteen year old girl. And she's like, Dad and it's like, <laughs> this raspy I'm sorry, but this raspy old woman's voice is coming out of this 14-year-old kitty cat girl. I'm like, this is not working right now. And sometimes it'd be fine, and then you would it would take you out of it. It's like, God damn it, like uh, every other sentence. It was like, mm, something just it just it's just weird to me. Um But you know, she's the least annoying of all the children, I will say. Uh she is the most competent. She is the most proactive, um, who doesn't constantly get in trouble. Uh, but, and I, I couldn't believe the movie did this. Uh, they, they have another trope in here, chat. They do have, they have, they have, uh, they're setting up another trope. And I'm like, don't do this. We have an immaculate conception in this movie. There is an immaculate conception that is not explained. And we have a character who will become blue kitty cat Jesus, who is literally blue kitty cat Jesus, chat. And where they they are, I, I I'm just I I'm I was I was floored. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> is this what we're doing? We're just hitting all the tropes now, Jimmy. We're going through all the fucking. Is, there's a fucking kitty cat Jesus in this movie, chat. And they're gonna keep and they're gonna keep um focusing. I guess. Well, it's 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 kind of like, all right. Well, this character's clearly kitty cat Jesus, but we're not going to um. We're not going to focus on that for this movie because we have underwater scenes that we want to show you. It's like, okay, that'll be for the third movie. So they don't really touch on it too much, but it's it's so obvious. Immaculate conception and literally Jesus, Chad, except Jesus is now a blue kitty cat. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That that was obnoxious. Don't 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 even bother. Come on. And the thing that's, it comes, that comes down to it, Chad, you know, um, nothing really matters in this movie. You know, in hindsight, it's pretty much just like a st- like the conflict. And there's a conflict in the movie, sure. You know, like the big thing is like Jake Sully and his family's being chased by Stephen Lang. That's it. And they got to stay off another Navi group. And they got all in the ways of the Navi, right? And the military finds out where they are. And, you know, they're like, all right, here we go. Some people die in the movie, sure. Uh, but the setup to those character deaths are so obvious. And when they do happen... Uh, it's just like, well, all right. I mean, it was kind of obvious this person was going to die. So when they die, it's like, I had no, I, I wasn't like, it was unexpected. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, there's just, there's just really nothing narratively interesting, uh, or, or in terms of the characters either, like outside of the, the CGI of the spectacle itself. It's just, there's more of it. There's just a lot more of it. You know, James, and the other thing is too, Chad, James Cameron also borrows from himself, uh, heavily. Again, or you could say in the last Avatar, I mean, definitely a lot of aliens. There's no doubt about that. Here, he steals scenes from Titanic. And I'm like, what are you doing? The last third of this movie, the big action sequence, definitely the last, I would say, 25 minutes, half hour, it's Titanic. Where they literally, remember the the scene with Leonardo DiCaprio getting handcuffed in the bowels of the uh, Titanic by David Ward, by Billy Zane, evil Billy Zane? It's the same fucking thing. It's the same thing again, and, and, it, and it's just, it's just the most, more characters are now handcuffed underneath the ship that is slowly sinking, and they got to escape, but thankfully, blue kitty cat Jesus is there. Um, yeah, I was like, all right, you're just stealing from yourself. Okay, and it's not interesting, because we know how it's all going to play out, and it plays out exactly like, you know, what you expect, like you, ex- like you expect, chat. T- to me, um, this this is the in terms of the, on the double Tosa scale. This is the very def. I mean, I whew, this is the very definition of a low rental. Um, the only reason why I probably wouldn't give anything lower is because you know, yes, it's beautiful looking. It's beautiful looking. They have beautiful underwater scenes with beautiful creatures and things. That's that's fine. That's neat. But you got to give me more at this point. Like we we waited. You know, not that I was, you know, hotly anticipating this film. It's what, been 13 years since the original movie? 13 fucking years, and this is it? You can give me an underwater slideshow. And with with minimal, minimal character development. 
and even more tropes uh, layered on top. It's like, what are you doing? Um, I'm surprised that criticism for this film is not harsher uh, because I know that the problems that this film has with its endless tropes, with its clunky dialogue and formulaic structure would be heavily criticized if they were in any other genre film or any other film for that matter. You know, if, if a Marvel movie, if a DC film, you know, had these, if a horror movie had these, oh my God, the criticism would be harsh as hell. But for whatever reason, not for this movie. I, I do think there's a, a lot of strange bias and favoritism at play with this movie. And I, I don't know, it needs to be pointed out because I'm just like, I'm just noticing like other films that people would criticize the, the, those movies for, like this, movie, this film has the same problems and not more so. And people are like, ah, it was, it was, but it's beautiful. There's the fucking whale. There's a space whale, chat. There's space whales in the movie. And, and, and dolphin, I don't know, fucking uh, uh, Nessie, whatever that dinosaur she was. They got all that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just kind of, not, I don't know if I would even say surprised at this point because, you know, the, the last movie, I think, had a lot of those same problems, but it became, but I think just because of the fact that it was so pretty and it, it, you know, didn't do anything controversial or to engender any sort of controversy that it, may, it managed to skirt by. And so we're, with this movie, I'm just like, you're doing the same thing again, except it's longer and you're putting in more tropes that would or, ordinarily be extraordinarily criticized, chat. You know, I mean, uh, like for example, how many, I mean, with, with the Phantom Man, Star Wars The Phantom Man, for example, that movie has a ton of issues, right? And one of the big heavily criticized things, the fact that Anakin is the product of immaculate conception. It's like, what? It's like, okay. Uh, are you going to explain that? Nah, it's immaculate conception. Just the way it is. And it's like, it is like why? And that, and that is very, I remember that's, that was that was very specifically criticized. But in this movie, no one brings it up. And it's like, nah, it's bullshit. So, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty. It's got some mildly throwing action sequences, but a lot of them are kind of repetitive. So for me, it's um, it's 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 a little rental. Just the performances. I mean, Sam Worthington is fine. He's just he's a very stressed out dad in the film. He's very stressed out. Uh, Natiri's always on his knickknack character. I feel like she's not in the movie a lot, honestly. She kind of takes a back seat, and she's just fucking mad. I guess so. I mean, I understand why, you know, she cares for her kids, but that, I don't think they really give her anything to do. And then you're with the kids, and you're with the kids in the most of the movie, which I couldn't even tell you. I think they have, oh, they have, uh, they have two boys. They have two boys. Uh, one who's the older brother, who is, I don't know his name. He's like the responsible one who is just fucking brown beaten because his fucking younger brother's an idiot. He's constantly getting in trouble and constantly getting captured. He constantly has to bail him out. And, you know, we then that's the other brother, and we, we focus on him. The other brother's just exhausted all the time. And then we have uh, the ki 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 Kitty, or Kiri, whatever her name is, played by Sigourney Weaver. And she's like the, well, I don't want to say too much about her, but, um, you know, she's the most competent one, and she's kind of the most sensitive and most in tune with the planet. And then they have a little girl named Taka, or whatever her name was, or Tik Tik, or some Tuk Tuk. I think her name is Took, and she's just there to be cute and get captured constantly. Every other scene, this little girl's getting captured, and that's it. And then you have, and then you have this one guy, this cultural appropriating kid, uh, who wants to be a Navi, but he can't be a Navi chat because he's a Humie, he's a dirty Humie, and he's appropriating their culture chat. And Taco, we should call her Taco. <laughs> and he's there. They do not develop that character. They don't know what to do with that character, the Spider character. They don't know what direction. They, they do so many. They, the other thing with that character, too, is, like, for a while, he's with Stephen Lang for most of the movie. And even though he is very much, like, I want to protect my adopted family, uh, you know, he, he, they're, 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 they're doing, like, a weird back and forth with him. He's like, I want to protect my, my, my adopted family, but I'm going to take you know, Stephen Lane and the other uh, human Navi hybrids to these other villages where I'm sure nothing will go wrong. And it's just like, what are you talking about? Of course something's going to go wrong. <laughs> what do you think they're going to do? And um, they let that kid, like, hang out wherever he wants, even though he's technically a prisoner of war. They just let him hang out on the bridge of ships, 
like always, like with no guard. Or he's just there. He's just walking around, able to do whatever he wants. And I'm just like, why is this kid able to do whatever the fuck he wants? Is just walk around and then cause mischief, which he does. And no, and everyone, everyone's like, whoa, we didn't expect him to cause mischief, even though he's literally from the enemy. Um, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. It, it 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 is it is goofy. It is it is goofy, and it needs to be pointed out. And this movie is not the second coming of cinema, like some people are saying. I'm like, I don't get it. Hey, listen, if you love the movie, you like the movie, hey, more power to you. I don't I don't under, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's um, it's gonna be a huge hit commercially. Um, but I just I just don't understand. I'm just like after this point, I'm like, all right, there's something something something's up. <laughs> Some weirds going on. <laughs> But for me, for me, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, I think the first movie's better. I think the first movie is better. The only thing that I think maybe this movie has over the first one is that, yeah, it looks better, but it's, the first film has a much better pacing to it. The characters, I think, have more depth, which is shocking to say. Um, and, you know, it, it it doesn't just it doesn't feel like it's wasting your time all that much. With this one, I feel like it does. You could you could you can cut out so much of this movie. It does not need to be three hours. Give me a fucking break. You can you get, 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 you can cut out an hour. You can cut out an hour of this movie. We can cut out so much on this ocean shit, and I'd be happier for it, chat. So this is this is um. Yeah, this is a, I'm not even saying it's a disappointing, because I, I went in with a lot of reservations, there's no doubt, and I was like, alright, what are you going to do? You, you said you're going to improve all these things, and they don't, they really don't. It was, it was, just, that was just part of the marketing, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, to me, this is a, uh, a low rental on the double-toasted scale, Chad. What about you guys? How do you feel about Avatar 2 Blue on Blue? I'm curious. And also, by the way, uh, thank you to No Name Woman for the 10 biddies. Let me read your comment right here. Uh, random question. If you could watch this as a tech demo. That's what it is. It is tech demo. The mark is a movie. Would you remind it? I mean, it's a long tech demo. <laughs> if they if they showed it like for a half hour, be like, oh, this is interesting stuff. Let's see this in movies. But it doesn't need to be a three, hour, three hours and 10 minutes or three hours and 15 minutes, whatever it is. But yeah, it makes for an interesting tech demo. Uh, Joe, thank you, by the way, for subscribing. I would not be shocked if all the new wave of anti woke commenters suddenly found offense to either Avatar movies for their messages. I mean, the only message in it that I'm really, I mean, it's in viral, it's an environmental message. Um, in it, obviously, but the first one does. And I mean, I guess it's also like, uh, Ah, uh, you don't need all your science. You just got to have faith. So, I mean, that might appeal to the, the you know, faith. A lot of, you know, people who are, you know, believers um, in whatever respective faith. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the, what those viewers, those, 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 I don't know, can call them reviewers, those people would think about this movie. It's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, no one won't think again for the 10 minutes generic, uh, movie so well, and all, uh, to all, it's overseas and all, especially China. I mean, this movie does not, I can't see anything in this movie that would piss off a Chinese audience, like at all, like at all. There's no, there's no wizards, you know, there's no gay people. All right. There's no black people. It's not going to piss off China at all. Chat. <laughs> they make sure yeah, they make sure if you are, if you, if you have a, you know, a brown complexion, they're going to make sure you have minimum scream time in this movie. You're going to be like, you're going to two to three minutes at most. <laughs> and after that, boom, you're either white or you're blue. That's how it goes, chap. Yeah, but it's like space mysticism. So they're kind of like skirting a line right now with that. Um, Mr. Dollar, I think it's 100 bees. Absolutely uh, shit kept me going when I was recovering from the near brush. They're all sick, so it's a special place in my heart. Jesus. Uh, no, I get you. I get you, man. Oh, but let me see what you guys are saying here, chat. That's my opinion, which it might be harsh. Might be harsh for for uh, for some people to hear, but that's just how I'm feeling, chat. Let's see what you guys are saying. Let me scroll up. <clears throat> the whales! <laughs> Kirby, the whales, Mr. Herman. Talk about the whales! Yeah, there's a lot of whales. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you about the whales. This will probably just be a part of the review. Yeah, they, there's a whole subplot with whales in this movie. And they set up that the whales are even smarter than the not. Okay, I don't think it's a spoiler. It's like it's it's like it's this is fine. They they set up that the whales are like the smartest species to ever exist, right? Space whales, and um, 
The thing is, though, all the whales have made a pact with each other. All the whales on Pando, which they call, like, Pic Picamo or something. I don't know. But all the space whales say, like, listen, even though we're incredibly fucking intelligent and we're all the smartest people on this planet, we choose not to fight back because we're pacifists. So we not, we're not going to fight back even though we're incredibly intelligent and we're fucking giant sea monsters. So we're not going to fight back. Even when we're being hunted by the Humies, which there's a reason why they're being hunted, chat. <laughs> oh, but now listen. Uh, this, oh, God. I, th this isn't a spoiler. So they, I, I will give them this. I will give James Cameron this. They moved away from Unobtainium. They do not mention Unobtainium once in this movie for probably good reason, probably because they were so uh, mocked for it in the original film. But now, Chad, they are after a new resource, which apparently they're like, this stuff is even better than Unobtainium, which is uh, the only thing I can describe it as is whale splooge. So they need all the whale splooge, chap, because that'll fix all the problems on Earth. So they'll get the whale splooge, and humanity's good, baby. So, yeah, it's whale splooge. That's what the humans are. That's what, that is what the fucking humies are after in this movie. We need the whale splooge, okay? Because we, if we inject ourselves with the whale splooge, then we'll be amazing. We'll be fantastic. I'm like, you, I was like, What? Yeah, it's like, I love it that he brought back fucking, like, whaling. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, what is it, the 1890s? Is the 1880s whale splooge? Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're a whale lover, you're going to be mad at this movie. They kill, I'll tell you what, they kill the fuck out of some whales. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, does it justify camera talk shit? No. <laughs> oh, my God. Cameron, Cameron needs to sit his ass down. It's like when he says, oh, my characters have a profound amount of depth compared to anything that Marvel and DC does. I'm like, I tell James Cameron, he's like, your movies do not. <laughs> Avatar and Avatar 2, Blue and Blue do not. You do not come close. Give me a break. <laughs> he does not. He, he, should, he should stay quiet. He, he should sit down now. Because I could point to everything that I just saw in this movie and go, hey, Marvel ain't doing this shit. And if Marvel did that shit, Marvel would be heavily criticized. That's the thing about this, which is so ironic to me, is that if Marvel pulled any of the shit that James Cameron just did in this movie, oh, my God. People would say it's the worst Marvel movie of all time. It's the worst DC movie. It's the worst genre movie. But because James Cameron did it, it's like, well, all can be forgiven. I'm just like, no, that's no, no. No, uh, that's the thing about this.